All right, so we are in geometry. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> we are on lesson 6-6, .6, inscribed shapes. Today's date is Monday, March 9th, 2020. Everyone has their name and date on the paper? Wait, it's not March 9th. March 9th? I think it's March 9th. Uh, question, Gunner? It is indeed daylight savings yesterday. Yes, if you guys are feeling tired, it's probably because you did not go to bed an hour early and prepared for daylight savings and you went to bed at your normal time. I went to which, bed at 9 instead of 10. Okay, so that's, we probably feel like we have an hour less of sleep because we had, we that's sprung fine, forward. That's why I'm feeling mad today. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm sorry that you're feeling mad. We all have those mad days. What is the Our objective today oh, is to do what, Andres? No, I don't know. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. All right, Julian. Wait, what? What is our objective? Can you read our so, objective? Uh, solve a, <laughs> dude, solve problems. So, oh, you, you misspelled it. You didn't fix it. Julian, you can log it. <laughs> All right, Julian, can you please read it in your normal Solve voice? triangles and quadrilaterals in circles. <laughs> Inscribed in circles. Okay, thank you, Julian. So, first of all, what does an inscribed angle mean? Um, let's go ahead and write down our formula yet again. So if I have an inscribed angle, scribed. <sighs> Thank you. All right, so if I have an inscribed angle, that's equal to what times my central angle? So this thing times the central angle. Wait, isn't it the other way around? And I will do the second formula, as Andres is asking with his quiet raised hand. The central angle is equal to blank times the inscribed angle. Inscribed angle. Yes, Andres. It's going to be central angle equals two times the inscribed angle. For that second formula, you indeed have it correct. And then the first one is. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, someone else. Gunner. New volunteer. Yes, Gunner. Uh, not quite. So if I have the central angle, I don't want to get even bigger to get to here. I should be getting smaller. Yes, one half. Thank you. So one half of the central angle, or you can say divide by two. All right. So as an example, let's go ahead and give another volunteer here. What if I change this to 80? If that's 80, then what is the measure of angle B, D, C, this inscribed angle right here must be, Jose? 40, nice. Thank you, Jose. No. Give me the card. Wait. You guys are the worst. <laughs> this is making my Yo, I just found it on the ground and I was just going to help you. Next time, turn it in. I saw you walk over there. So I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> dropped it towards I, I, Andres. I, I dropped it. Oh. I picked it up. So I, I, picked, I picked it up. Picked it up picked oh, yeah. yeah okay. I just picked it up. Uh, yeah. So you're welcome. Yeah. Like, <laughs> All right. So. There's something that pops out of the inscribed angle theorem that's kind of cool. So what if my central angle is this blue angle here is a straight line? So a line has how many degrees again? Square is in. Uh, sorry, Julian, you already read our objective. Yeah, Jimmy. 180. 180, exactly. So everyone write it down. We're going to say that the measure of angle BAC, that angle right here, is 180. Let's Write that down verbatim. So the measure, we'll say the measure of angle, capital B, capital A, capital C, is equal to 180 degrees. Yes. So if we know our central angle, then we also know our inscribed angle. If I know that that's 180, how do I figure out what angle the red inscribed angle is? Sergio. You divide by 2. Divide by 2 and you get? Uh, 
90 degrees. Everyone write it down. The measure of angle BDC is 90 degrees. That's correct. Measure of angle BDC is equal to 90 degrees, which means if we have a 90 degree angle, we can always put that little right angle mark that looks like a, a half of a square. So this is kind of key. Whenever, yeah, question? Wait, so whenever you have like a straight line, is it always going to be 90? 100% of the time, yes. Okay. So whenever I'm dealing with a circle and I have a diameter of the circle, the inscribed angle that touches that diameter 100% of the time is going to be a 90 degree angle. And vice versa, if I have a 90 degree angle, that means it's a diameter. You can assume that it's a straight line. Before we couldn't assume, you might have had like a weird angle that came down here and it might have not been straight. Now we can assume, hey, it's straight as long as that's a 90 degree angle. Sergio, question. How can you prove this? How can I prove that? So the inscribed angle theorem up above states that I always take half whatever the central angle is. So it's a one line proof. I just divide by two and I get 90 degrees. A line always has 180 degrees, half 180 is always 90, therefore this is always 90. All right, so one thing I'll also point out is whenever we have a 90 degree triangle, that unlocks a lot of different theorems that we're allowed to use. I have now unlocked a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I've unlocked the Pythagorean theorem because that applies to right triangles. I've now unlocked sine, cosine, tangent. Those apply to right triangles. So now I'm kind of bringing in all the stuff from our last unit into this current unit. So if you haven't mastered what the Pythagorean theorem is, or wait, Sokotoa means what again? If you don't remember those, you're going to have to review those because they're coming up again. Yeah, Gunnar. Oh, I, I kind of forgot. Oh. I was going to say Pythagorean theorem. I was going to say like what it was. But. Okay. Uh, no worries. All right, so let's try an example. So I'm telling you in the problem that BC is a diameter, and I need to figure out the radius. How am I going to do this? How am I going to solve this puzzle? Well, use the theorem that you just had right above to get what? What information can we start writing down? All we know is we have a diameter. Correct. Fernando? Yes. What angles do we have? Yep. So this angle right here is 180 degrees. And you said, where is 90? What angle? BDC, perfect. That's 90 degrees. We'll just do that little symbol there. Perfect. That is the perfect first step. That's kind of the only first step that we have. So we know we have a right triangle. Well, how is a right triangle going to help us define this length BA or this length AC? What's going to happen here? Anyone see what's going to go on? Andres? If you find the length BC, you can divide that by two and then you can figure out what BA is. Perfect, yeah. So the goal now is let's find that length, and as I said, cut in half, divide by two, and then we'll have the radius. So you have the process correct. So now, how are we going to find that diameter, which is the hypotenuse of the triangle? Sergio? By using three and four. Three and four, yeah. So how am I going to use three and four in a formula? Is equal to. C squared. And where am I plugging in 3 and 4 into? Oh. <laughs> All right, so 3 squared plus 4 squared, that's still equal to C squared. All right, um, I need someone to, oh, got yeah, a question. So whenever you have a right triangle that you can use Pythagorean theorem, so, okay. Yep, exactly. Whenever you have a right triangle, you can use that theorem. And typically, you're probably going to. Um, as a general rule of thumb on this homework, you're going to be seeing the Pythagorean theorem at least once. Yeah, question again, Andres? Do you think I can collect all of the cards and just hand them in at the end of the lesson? Um, I like That'd having them here. That way I can figure out who hasn't participated, but though. But then that'll make it easier for you because you won't have to get up and then I can just tell you I like the names getting up. That. I can just yeah, tell you the like names that are walking. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong with that? All right, so <laughs> uh, I appreciate it, but no, thank you. Um, so on the left hand side, what do I have? Someone simplify. Yes, Monse. 9 plus 16, Nine plus 16, plus 16, 16 equals. equals. And then can you add the 9 and 16 for me as well, too, please? Uh, two, 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 
Perfect. 25 is equal to C squared. Thank you, Monse. I'll take your card. And our final step to solve for C, what am I going to do to both sides? Let's get someone new in. Yeah, Cohen. Uh, square root it. Yes, let's square it the left, square it the right, and I get... Perfect. Thank you. Five is indeed C. All right, class. So we're done, right? We found it. It's five. <laughs> no, that's not the answer. We know that the entire length here of the diameter, the entire length here of the hypotenuse is five, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking not for the diameter, but the radius. So our final step is to do what, Gunner? Divide by two. Divide by two, and I get the answer of? 2.5. Everyone write it down. 2.5. And box it. <laughs> You're good. We can say this if you want to make it in the notes. This was diameter, but we need a radius. But we needed radius. All right, that was example one. Please stop. <laughs> All right, example number two. If there are no more questions on example number one, no one's raising their hand to ask me questions. Gunner, you have a question? No, kind of, maybe. Uh, example number two then. So. We have some arc measures, and that's going all the way back to lesson 6-1. What is an arc measure again? Okay, well, an arc is talking about a piece of the outside of the circumference, and the measure, so it's talking about the degrees, not the length, not like five meters. So I know EC measures 60 degrees, so we need to label. EC is 60 degrees. Um, the way that I like to label it is just by doing like a squiggly or a curly line. So I'm going to do maybe a zigzag line here. A zigzag line meaning that line right there is 60 degrees. I'm just interpreting what the problem is giving us. And the arc BD measures 80 degrees. So BD, oh yeah, B is there, D is there. So down here, I'm gonna do maybe some swoopy lines down here. BD is 80 degrees. Okay, and I'm trying to find the measure of angle CFB. Where, where's CFB? Can someone tell me where CFB is? Andres, so B is that angle right there? <laughs> <laughs> so the angle is, you pointed to the, the lines. CFB is it that one? Yeah, it's the answer. So just making sure we all know how to interpret angles. Yeah, so we're trying to find that angle. Let's label that x, or theta, I guess. Theta is usually our variable for holding our answer. So we're trying to find that theta. It seems like we're not given very much information here. Somehow we're going to have to find this. And as a general rule of thumb, we're talking about inscribed angles. You're probably going to use inscribed angles. Do you guys see any inscribed angles? Yes. All right, with the choir's hand, tell me, or at least point or label it in your out loud, uh, what is an inscribed angle up here? Sergio. Angle. Oh wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's, a, a it's already a turned in card. <laughs> oh, <sighs> one. Oh, Can you guys so, yeah. please do a better job of helping me say, here's my card, Mr. Sudan. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Andres. <laughs> Tell me an inscribed <laughs> angle. An inscribed angle would be um, um, E. E. Say so, yeah. Actually, no. Yeah, it would be EDF. Yeah, so EDF, so that angle right here, EDF is an inscribed angle. So EDF, let's talk about that one first. I'm gonna do this one in green. EDF right here. How do I find EDF? What is this angle, the measure of that angle right there? Two people know. It's an inscribed angle. So look where it intersects the circle. You're either gonna multiply by two or divide by two. What are you gonna be doing from that measure? Jose? Five by two. Five by two, yeah, exactly. So if I think about it, I kind of had this central angle right here, which looks bigger 
than that angle, so I'm going and I'm dividing by two. So I had 60 degrees, and Jose, our actual measure of EDF is 40. 40. 40. Wait. Yeah, 30. Why is it 30? Yeah, divide the 60 by 2. This is the measure that it's talking about, so divide that by 2, and I get this angle down there. Everyone label it also, that is 30 degrees. 30 degrees. Hmm. What's another inscribed angle that we can use? Can someone else label an inscribed angle? Andres did the last one. Yes, Josie. B-E-D, yes, so B-E-D right here. And do you also happen to know what that angle measures? It is indeed, 40 degrees. Can someone else explain how she got 40 degrees? A question, Andres? So would that be the same as FED? Uh, that's the same angle as FED. You could label it two different ways, yeah. How did Josie get 40 degrees? Someone else? Monsa? Oh, there it is. Half of eight. Because that was the intersection of the inscribed angle, so half of that gives us our angle up here at 40 degrees. Everyone's good? No questions? All right, so we're basically there. Look, all we're doing is we're trying to find this angle. I have these angles out here. We're just like two steps away, guys. How are we going to do this? Sergio? So that's a curve one, 80 degrees in the triangle. You have to add those two and then subtract 180 to that. And then you have to use vertical angle. Perfect. Yeah, both the steps. So let's do that. So I need another quiet raise hand to do the instructions that Sergio just told you and do the math for us now. Andres, do the math. So you're going to do 40 degrees plus 30 degrees uh, plus x, right? Oh yeah, plus x. Equals 180. I'll do that in blue. Plus x is equal to 180 degrees. All three of those should add up to 180 degrees. Yeah. Then? Then you uh, combine like terms. So 40 plus 30 is 70. Plus x equals 180. Keep going. You subtract 70 on both sides. And you're left with x equals 110 degrees. Cool. And our x in this and case. Theta right is also. Since you're doing vertical angles, theta is also 110. There it is, 110 degrees. Thank you. So you had the perfect analysis, and Andres did our math. I'll talk about that entire process once again to summarize. We labeled what we knew from the problem. The problem told us our arc measures. We labeled our arc measures. From there, we used inscribed angles to do half of 60 to get 30, half of 80 to get 40, then we use the fact that all three of these angles add up to 180 to find x. We knew that's 110. Vertical angles means these two angles are the same, therefore theta is 110 degrees. Are there questions about this problem? You're going to be seeing types of problems like this and types of problems that aren't even on the notes that you're going to have to interpret on your own. I can't have every single type of problem because our notes would be three pages long. All right. Time to do inscribed shapes that are other than triangles. Now I have a quadrilateral. This might be a kite. It doesn't look like a perfect kite, so we're on the back. Let's see what this problem is even asked. So I'm trying to find the measure of angle ARD. Again, ARD, this angle right here. What is this angle? Let's go ahead and label that theta. That is theta down here. Wait, why not delta? You could use whatever letter you want. Yeah, Greek letters are typically associated with angles. So you could do a lowercase delta if you'd like. Usually you use the lowercase Greek alphabet. So a delta just looks like a curvy D, lowercase d. Um, all right, so how are we going to do this? And again, you're using inscribed angles. And how are we doing on time? We get out of here at 49, so we still have plenty of time, 23 minutes. And this is kind of where we cut off on Friday. so. People are probably going to be a little confused on what we're doing. So we're trying to use inscribed angles. Let me go backwards. I think going backwards in this problem is the easiest way to solve this. If I'm using inscribed angles, let's look at this theta. 
this ARD angle, it touches the circle here at A and D, which means this angle theta is going to be half of whatever this arc measure AED is. I'll say that again. This angle theta is going to be half of whatever this arc measure AED is. So if I find this measure AED, I'm basically done divided by 2. Well, how does that help us, Mr. Snow? It's a good step forward. But there are other inscribed angles, too. There's technically four inscribed angles, three of which are helpful. I guess two of which are helpful, one of which is not. So if I take a look, a look at the 100 degrees, so this EDR that I'm talking about, this is an inscribed angle, which means that this angle A, or sorry, EAR here, is twice of that. So this measure is 200 degrees. EAR is 200 degrees. Give me a fist of five on how well you understand why AER is 200. If you give me a five or a four, I'm going to call on you to explain. Give me a fist of five. How well do you understand that the measure of arc EAR is 200 degrees? Everyone give me a fist of five right now. If you don't know, give me the one. I'm just trying to figure out what you guys do and don't know. All right, Jose, explain it to the rest of the class once again. So 100 times 2, the inscribed angle, and again, I can make this clearer if I using technology is the better visual. This angle right here, it touches at E, it touches at R, therefore twice of this angle will be this arc measure. Twice of this 100 will be 200 up here. And I wouldn't write any of this down because this is kind of useless information at this point. I'm just trying to show you where the inscribed angles are. Okay, give me a fist of five again. How well do you understand where this 200 degrees came from? Oh, nice. We went from a one to a five to a five. No one's at a two or a one still that I can see. If there are, please ask a question because I can't see everyone's hands. They're not holding them high enough. All right, so let's try another inscribed angle, one that actually is helpful. Let's try the 120 degrees. That is an inscribed angle that touches A and D on our circumference. Therefore, this measure of the arc ARD, ARD, this arc over here, and let's go ahead and label this in our notes because this is going to be the useful one. This arc length right here measures what? What is the measure of arc ARD? Josie? Yeah, everyone label it. 240 degrees. 24, that was 240 degrees. All right, I'm hoping that someone can put the backward stuff that we started with with this forward stuff that we're doing. Does anyone see kind of the answer now? If I know that this entire arc measures 240 degrees, can we somehow connect that to this arc up here and then divide by two to get the answer? Gunner? Subtract, subtract 240 from uh, Okay, what will that give us? Not in terms of the numbers, but in terms of the general problem. What am I talking about if I do 360 minus 240? AED. Yeah, the measure of arc AED. Can someone else do Gunner's math? Someone write it down, Andres? Uh, 120. Yep, 360 degrees minus 120. 240 I mean, degrees. 40, not 120. <laughs> You're good. Is equal to, as you said, 120 degrees, which means this angle up here, or this measure up here, is 120 degrees. Hmm, suspicious. That looks strange. Does, that's 120 degrees and that's 120 degrees. Does that always happen, Mr. Sindel? If this is 100 degrees, does that mean that this angle over here is 100 degrees? No. That's a question that I'll let you guys chew on. I don't want to give all the answers away. But we're basically there. What's our final step with the quadrus hand? And you're going to have to give me an answer with this step. What do I do, sir? I have the point. You divide by two? Yep, I divide what by two? Uh, and I get. There it is. Everyone write it down. Our answer is 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is our final answer. Yes, Sergio. Sergio. Say again? I am not 
understudy and arm. Like the, because the angle. Like the two 120s. Oh yeah, this 120, this 120? Yeah. Yeah. It, I, wait, is there a shortcut, this. is there a shortcut to 100 times two would be 200, 200? I think it is a coincidence. So, well, well, let's check that, right? So if this is 100 degrees, then that means that this inscribed angle over here is 200 degrees. 200 degrees subtracted from 360 is 160, which means this angle over here is 160. Not 100. So it is a weird coincidence that it's 120 degrees. Why did that come out that way? I think it's a, is it only unique to 120? I don't know. I wonder if there's another angle that's like that too. I bet we could set up an equation to solve, but we're kind of getting low on time now. So that's a tangent for another day. Yeah, Andres. Um, is there a shortcut to this? Yes, I'm about to talk it. Talk about it right now. Oh. Ready for your shortcut? Yeah. So if you ever have an inscribed quadrilateral, and Gunnar, you can plug your ears so you don't hear the shortcut. If you ever have an inscribed quadrilateral, what's kind of cool is that these diagonals, these opposite angles, opposite means across, right? If I go across from those angles, they will always add up to a certain number. Does anyone see what that is? And even better, does anyone remember what it's called when they add up to that number? Yeah, Jose. Yep, let's all write it down. Sum to 180, or add to 180. If you don't like the word sum, you can say add. Add to 180 degrees, or even more formally, opposite angles in an inscribed quadrilateral, I'll put this in parentheses, are su, what's the word over here? Do you know it, Sergio? No? Who knows this word, Andres? Subtracted. No, it does start with an S. Sub. Supplementary. Yeah, supplementary. Supplied. Complementary is add to 90. Supplementary means add to 180. Question, Sergio. Like the angle above, I feel like 180, the other one is like 100. Yeah, so this angle R E A, or E A R, I guess. That's, yeah, exactly, 80 degrees over here because these two must add up to 180 degrees. Yeah, cool little shortcut, right guys? You don't have to do all that work over and over again. So let's try using that on another problem where I have a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral meaning I have a four-sided or four-edged, or I have the same word, four vertice shape. Um, I have PARK, P-A-R-K, and it's inscribed in circle O, and I need to find the measure of angle P-A-R, so P-A-R is this angle right here. Let's label that theta, P-A-R is theta. All right, you can probably do this in your heads, but if you wanna write it down, you can as well. Find that angle, and I'll leave it to you guys to solve that. And if you need to work with a neighbor, you can. You're using the rule that we did up above. Opposite angles in an inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary. Good luck. All right, so. Quiet raised hand, who can help me set this up and solve it? Um, does everyone have their card in? I don't think so. Edder, yeah, help us out. <gasps> I'll help you out. So, theta is opposite to what angle? Is it 43 degrees or 106 degrees? 43, all right, so let's set up our equation. Those two must sum to 180. So how do I say those two sum to 180 with algebra? Theta, is it going to be plus, multiply? Yeah. Yep. And that must add up to? Be careful. 180. 180, yeah. So Edder has the setup for us, and now I need someone else to solve. Now do I have everyone's cards in? I think I do. Yeah, Julian, go for it. <laughs> oh yeah, but you you said that you wanted to speak, right? You got this, Julian. There it is, minus 43, minus 43, and do you know what that is, Julian? <laughs> you can call on anyone you like. You have to choose someone that has a quiet raise hand. I have the power to call on people without the raise hands. 
137 degrees. Ooh, 137 Ooh. degrees. Oh. No luck. <laughs> 137 degrees. Final answer, box it. These are nice and easy as long as you know that trick that the opposite angles are always supplementary. Wait, you don't multiply or divide by two? You don't need to divide by two or any extra steps. Yeah, it's nice and easy. All right, so I need you guys to now give me a fist of five. How well can you solve problems with triangles and quadrilaterals that are inscribed uh, in circles? I see a, come on, real, real numbers here, guys. I see four, four, five, five, four, four, five, three, four, five, and Cohen, you're at a four, all right. 